Hello, I'm a BX Toy Cat, and welcome back to the second channel video. Today I have some more Geography of Toy Cat for you all. It's everyone's first second channel series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today, by the way, do you like how I do the the world thing with my hands? I like it. But yeah, today I'm going to be talking about America, the United States of America to be specific, because I wanted to talk about the idea of a 51st or a 52nd or a etc. state, because one of the things that always intrigued me when I was younger is the fact that the United States actually has added states within some people's lifetimes. You know, it was like about 50 years ago that they added two brand new states to the Union, and uh, because there was some reference in an outdated history book to like, oh, America has 50 states now, it always made me think like, oh, well at some point I have to remember 51 states, and although that looks like it's going to be some way down the right uh, road at some point in your let's right you watching this right now's lifetime there will be a 51st maybe even a 52nd and a 53rd state in the united states of america so i figured i'd go through the likely contenders for that hopefully you all do enjoy this so let's get straight into it and let's start with the most likely contender this is one i've mentioned before and if you don't know then maybe you don't know your u.s territories too well and i don't blame you entirely because it is puerto rico so puerto rico you know it's referenced a whole bunch by i guess uh, you know the, the southern states of america but it's a place that you might have not have heard of because it is one of the various territories of the United States. So even though it's technically United States territory, and if you're born there, you're a United States citizen, it is not actually a US state. It's again, it's a technical little thing, an unincorporated territory. And the advantage of this is that they do not pay federal income tax. There's a whole bunch of other taxes they pay the federal, but they don't pay the income tax, which is of course a really big one. So it was kind of referred for quite some time. However, as recently as uh, you know, uh, 2010, 2012, they had a referendum on you know what they want to do because their current situation is eroding very, very quickly, and uh, uh, although a lot of, uh, you know, the population said, yeah, we're not really in favor of anything, uh, a lot of the people that did vote for something voted for being a state. So, technically, because the referendum was kind of a little shaky, because, again, it had a majority of people that voted for something, but not the majority of people that voted in general. Basically, uh, Obama, I believe it was in 2012, just after the re-election, uh, he basically had a big thing where he's like, okay, here's some more money, throw a better referendum, and uh, if you have the referendum, then we'll start talks and you become your state. And, again, there's a, a I don't want to get too much into the back and forth of that, but it looks like at some point, if that referendum does go ahead, even though it's been like four years now, uh, that, then you, Puerto Rico might be the 51st state of the United States. Again, it'd be really interesting if it was, because it'd be the first state where English isn't the kind of assumed common language, because Spanish is massively widely spoken uh, versus English, and uh, it'd also be interesting because it's, you know, it's the first uh, state that's just in the Caribbean. You've got two separated states in the United States so far, you've got Hawaii over here in Alaska, and adding Puerto Rico to that, I think kind of adds to the diversity of the United States, because the other 48 are all tied together, and when you start spreading out more, I don't know, it has an interesting uh, uh, feel to me, and yeah, basically if Puerto Rico was added, it wouldn't be the smallest state by any means, and it would, you know, it'd kind of fit right in the middle on a lot of tables, which is interesting if you ask me. So, yeah, that's Puerto Rico, uh, a state uh, a state that I think is in waiting. I think if there's ever been, like, a time where you can be like, will there be a 51st state? Then I'd say Puerto Rico will definitely be that. So, what about the 52nd then? What What's going to be the 52nd state of America? So, you can't, well, there's a whole bunch of, uh, you know, different things you can go around here, but I think the most likely contender is probably uh, Washington, D.C. So, uh, although, you know, I know this is a big, like, constitutional issue because, oh yeah, Maryland and Virginia, is it Maryland and Virginia? Maryland and... <laughs> I honestly, I, I always uh, get lost finding Washington. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Maryland and Virginia, right? They both gave up some of their uh, state lands so that the Washington, D.C. could be created. The District of Columbia, which is basically where the, the capital sits because they didn't want the capital in any state because there's reasons for that. However, there's a secondary uh, you know downside to this. And it, that, that secondary downside is that there's no electoral votes afforded to the people of Washington, D.C. And I believe they have a representative in Congress, but he's like a non-voting one. And basically, it's the whole like, oh, it's taxation of representatives. That representation and although it's not exactly that basically a lot of people who live in the washington dc area because it is a very busy metropolitan city feel like oh so what, what's what's even going on here so i think washington dc at some point because the population is just growing right now it's almost a million people that live here in this place that doesn't it's bigger than some states it's it's bigger than wyoming i believe uh, it's and there's just these people that live here and they're, they've got that whole you know mantra that started america i think at some point yeah washington will either become its own state which i know starts to muddy the waters of like, ah, oh, it's the capital is now a state. But yeah, it, it'll become its own state or it'll be absorbed into the other ones because again, leaving it as a district, uh, you know, a, yeah, a district uh, permanently is going to cause problems because again, most uh, cities are becoming bigger as rural areas become slower. Again, very slowly over time. And because Washington DC is a very large city, that just creates a bigger and bigger problem over time. And exactly how they fix that is beyond me. But I think the most easy way is just to be like, yeah, Washington DC, it's its own state and we're going to give it a bunch of stuff like that because again the funny thing about it is 
people vote on their laws because, again, Congress is in control of all of that and not the people that live there. And it's there's a whole bunch of weird things in it. You can look it up if you're curious. But for now, just bear in mind, Washington, D.C. is the most likely, in my opinion, contender for the 52nd state. It's all about 53rd, etc. So this is where things start to get a little bit more unlikely. But uh, I think Guam and the uh, United States Virgin Islands are the two most likely like, oh yeah, these are just new places we're making up. Because Guam, if you don't know, I always get lost finding it on a map because I'm awful and uh, <laughs> it's just over here, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So here is Guam on a map. And as you can see, it's about double as far out as Hawaii. There's Hawaii and there's Guam, which is like one Hawaii's distance away from Hawaii. But yeah, this is Guam. It's a um, unincorporated... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I believe it's an unincorporated territory of the United States. And basically, yeah, you've heard of Guam probably because military stuff. And it's a very tactical location for United States territory. It's the same thing as Puerto Rico in terms of people that live there are American cities. They vote in the primaries, but they don't get presidential votes unless they go and live on mainland United States. Which is weird because they're mostly military people and there's lots of weird reasons you might want that. But yeah, Guam is basically one of the more likely contenders for a state. The reasons they might not make it one is because, I mean, the distance is one thing. The population is another. It would be the smallest state by a, a long... Uh, you know, a lot uh, in terms of population that should be, and it'd also be one of the uh, smallest states in terms of land area because look at it, it's pretty small, it's uh, not quite Rhode Island size, but it's it's getting down there, isn't it? So, yeah, with that said, what about the 54th and 55th? So, now we're getting even more unlikely because you know, American state splitting is something that kind of gets a bit technical, but I think our state splitting into multiple ones is something we could see in the future because the way states are grouped together for their senators and for their electoral yeah electoral votes uh, is actually i guess somewhat problematic especially when you have a population that's very divided so california right now if you don't know it's very it very heavily leans one way when it comes to this whole like everything that's political thing and as a result of that the people that don't lean that one way are like oh hey what's that with not leaning our way so <laughs> is that is that good enough is I, again i like to stay hands off of the politics of this but yeah basically there's been quite a few proposals to split california because it's the biggest population by population uh, yeah biggest state by population i said it before just biggest state and people are like oh it's like yeah it's like yeah no 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 it's like always population but yeah uh, california's the biggest state by population and about one in ten americans live in california and again you can see where they get traumatic if it's all treated as just one state area the same as yeah wyoming or something so basically splitting it into two is or even splitting it to six is something that's been discussed many many times none of those proposals have ever gained too much steam besides one for jefferson which takes a little bit of area from oregon a little bit of area from California and calls it its own thing because again bear in mind the only reason California is the way it is and not that way which a lot of people are but not everyone is because generally city areas go one way and people that aren't in cities go the other way and that is uh, basically because uh, yeah California has some of the biggest cities LA San Diego San Francisco San Jose all those cities add up one way and that's that's how you get to California where it is right now where you have two very distinct population groups living in the same place so oh uh, yeah that's California for you that's why it might split into lots of states. Uh, again, there's, there was one proposal to split it into six, which would be states 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. But yeah, with that said, let's move on to the next state, which is also likely to split, and that is New York. So New York, if you don't know, is both a city and a state. If you're in America, you know that. If you're not in America, you might be confused like me, because it's New York, New York, which confusing stuff. So, uh, yeah, why is New York both a city and a state? Well, it was just, it's the officially, you know, the state is called New York, and New York City is this thing down here. However, about half of the people that live in New York live in the New York City greater area. And this causes problems because lots of statewide stuff is done just for New York City. And it also causes problems the other way because lots of bodies which basically control the New York City. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the MTA, I believe, is responsible for all transport around the New York City area. Or it's, 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 it's responsible for all transport around New York. However, it's mostly about New York City, but the whole state gets a say, which is problematic when, again, there's like 95% of the area of the place is over here. Sorry, my cat just walked in. She's just quite rude. Cookie! Cookie! She's gonna interrupt my video. I'm gonna gonna make her be cute for the camera. Anyway, uh, like I said, uh, so there's basically two um, kind of sides of New York. There's New York City, and there's uh, what a lot of people like to call upstate New York. So I'm gonna tell here now. Uh, there's upstate New York, and as you can imagine, which uh, has cities like Buffalo, which is near the border. Uh, it has cities like Syracuse. There's Buffalo. There's Rochester. Syracuse. And although they're reasonably sized cities by American standards, they are just entirely dwarfed. Um, by uh, the uh, New York City itself. So, uh, yeah, basically there's problems with the two sides being entirely different. Again, one is a one of the most densely packed, most 
I guess, uh, pro I guess, uh, most economically active cities in the world, and the rest is just, you know, generic kind of territory. And basically, as a result, one of the most likely states that have to come out of this is New York City might become its own separate thing and take Long Island with it. So, yeah, there's a fun little fact about New York. It might actually split at some point. Again, it's one of those things where they discuss it a whole bunch. Actually splitting a state is something that's never properly been done, so... The procedures, who even knows? But they're the two most likely, likely they're the two most likely states to split. A fun fact actually is that Texas, when it joined, it gained, it like kept the right to split into up to five separate states if it wanted to, which is um a really bizarre like condition of joining. So you might see a Texas where there's five separate states. However, uh, you know, if like take away that and make it again there's a whole bunch of different uh, suggestions for it and also like every other state has that same thing and also if you look it up online there's a whole bunch of other potential states which almost became a thing so uh for instance the united states almost bought greenland during world war ii for like 100 million dollars denmark said no and that's why it's not a state but greenland could have been the 51st state and i know this there's, there's some well i guess it'd be the 49th but anyway uh, there are some fun facts about new states in the united <laughs> in the united states of america cookie is gonna go Enjoy laying in my stuff now, and I hope you learned something about geography, or at least, like, the cat or something. So, yeah, thank you all very much for watching this video. I will see you all in the next one. So, have a nice day. Goodbye.